Welcome to another video by Lane Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy. Today we're going to talk about buckets, how they work, how they store things, etc. This is going to be a oversimplified form, but I hope it gets you an understanding of how it works. And when we're all done, that you'll have a much better understanding. So the general, there are four places that Splunk stores data. It calls it the hot buckets, the warm buckets, the frozen buckets, sorry, cold buckets and frozen buckets and so it's got my hot my warm my cold and my frozen and the way buckets work is buckets are just an is a method a time based bucket they basically store information based off of time and so as new logs come in it says all right this data fits within the last as I said, oversimplification, it's never just down to an hour or a day, but we're going to say it's that way. New log comes in, it says, oh, it's in this hour, you go in that bucket. Oh, it's two hours old, you go in that bucket. You're in this bucket, you're uh, a day old, you go over in that bucket. And the concept is we'll have so many buckets, and as logs come in, it, the Splunk just keeps passing them out into the different buckets. And it's a way of distributing the buckets out, and then when you search the data, that's why Splunk is a time-based uh, search system. You'll put in your time. That's why it's the most effective. And Splunk, say, I want to look for my logs on 125 to 124, 2024. Instead of looking across the entire giant set of data, it immediately looks at all the headers on each of these buckets and says, ah, okay, the, the, these two buckets contain the data for that query. And... Now, we'll have to look through the entire bucket. So, for example, say I just wanted the data from 11.30 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. on the 24th to the 25th. It crosses two buckets, so it will search all the data in those two buckets. But it's still faster than searching everything here. I do point out like the meta commands, those meta commands, when they go look at source types, they're just basically grabbing the high level from each of these buckets. They don't even search the data. It goes and says, all right, look in each of these buckets, find every source type that's recorded, every uh, source, host, et cetera. And it's good, but it's not perfect. And because buckets, you've heard me say in metadata, if you want an exact count, metadata command doesn't work. Why? Because it's going to tell me how many events are in this bucket. That's all great and dandy if the bucket was storing at, at an hour, but most likely this bucket's going to have some leech over, leap, uh, lead over into another day. It doesn't, bre it breaks it down off what makes sense to Splunk, not just days, hours, months, things like that. So when you're getting a count, you're getting a count of the buckets, but the buckets might not fit into the time frames that you specifically called out. So that's why Metadata is really fast, but don't treat it as the exact count of the events. Sorry, that's a little side tangent, but just so you're aware, if you use metadata commands, it's going to be looking at each of the buckets and totaling up what's in there. And while this, in my perfect scenario, has them all spread out by days, they're never that easy. And there are multiple buckets in a day and all that sort of stuff. So, again, we'll come back to this. We have hot, warm, cold. So, general principle, if you're, being, if you're setting up your uh, system, you're setting up your Splunk, Hot, you don't have to worry about. That's your RAM. You really can't control it. You want more hot, you just have to add more RAM to your system. Everything in RAM is going to run really, really quick. It's it's the fastest storage. You don't have to re do any read writes to it. It's already there in memory. Whereas all of these have to be read and written, written into a uh, back to memory. So hot is the fastest, but as soon as you run, you use up the, the allotted space in memory, it will start throwing its buckets into warm. And warm, in, a, in the ideal world, you're going to use your fastest storage disks. You don't want to make you want to make sure that you're sending it to a partition that is made up of fast disks like SSD or NVMEs, uh, high I/O disks. Then, after it reaches a certain point, the warm will roll over to the cold. Basically, it's because we've run out of the allotted space here, and we'll move into cold. Cold, as a general rule, you want is slow storage. Now, if you have nothing but solid state drives and NVMEs, you may not even have a cold storage. I mean, in reality, it's all just going to stay here. But eventually, you only have so much room here, so you'll move it down to cold storage. Cold storage is going to be your cheapest uh, storage, but of course, with that low cost comes uh, slower read and writes. 
And just remember as you read, if you're going to say, hey, I want to go grab the last in this situation today, let's going to go grab the last seven days. We'll grab the current information in memory, what's left of today that wasn't in memory. It'll grab all of these days and it'll grab these. These results will be much, will be faster. This will be the fastest, faster and slower, but it will search all of those that fit in that time frame. And so it's, as far as searches go, at a really, really high level, it doesn't make a difference. It's going to search them all, but it's how fast the results come back. The faster you have of disk, the faster disk read writes you have, IOs, you're going to be faster returning results. But you can't, it's probably not practical to build hundreds and hundreds of terabytes worth of storage if that's how long it takes to get your to your storage requirements. So that's why we have slow storage. Now, what happens when slow storage, you runs out and the concept is you set in your index we'll come to that in a second we'll go back to another page and show that you say hey i'm going to store my logs for 365 days what happens to the logs that hit 365 days by default they want to roll over to the frozen logs frozen logs cannot be searched say uh, everything 118 and earlier is in frozen if i say give me everything of january I will only get starting in January 19th. I will not, Splunk will not search the frozen logs. Frozen logs are stored. They go on some sort of long-term storage and Splunk cannot read them. If you need that data, you come back and say, you know what, I really need a January 1st data. You can unthaw the data and it will become part of, it will take a minute, a little bit for it to unthaw. It'll then move it into your, your cold storage and then you'll be able to search it. That's how frozen works. Just these are searchable, frozen is not. Now, if you don't set up frozen, by default, when it moves to frozen, it's actually deleted. I like to call it the bit bucket in the sky. So, for example, if we say we want to store um, 30, uh, a week's worth of data, uh, th whatever, this 30 days worth of data, as soon as day 31 rolls around, it is erased. If you say I want to hold 100 gig worth of data, as soon as you've reached 100 gig, the oldest piece of data gets erased to the great bit bucket in the sky. So that's that. Let's go to uh, Splunk here. This is, if I go into settings, indexes, we can kind of get a visual of this. And I'm going to do a new index. And we can see that we have a home path, a cold path, a thought path. This home path, I wish they call it uh, warm. It does say it here, but it's the home path is your hot, warm database path. And leave it default if you want to keep it. We're not going to talk about putting paths in there. But this is your warm, this is your cold. And then I said thawed, come, uh, frozen goes into thought. It technically goes here, but it's treated the same as cold. It's just where when you unfreeze something, will it go? Um, and how do things move into frozen? It's based off like this, max size of entire index. I said 500 gig. As soon as we reach 500 and one gig, it's going to erase the oldest records. And those are going to go to frozen or the bit bucket in the sky. There is also in your indexes.comp setting, you can say, hey, I want to store this for 365 days. And the same principle, when it goes 366 days, it goes away. So you just write, here's the, when you go into the operating system, you can look at your file paths. Here's your hot, here's your cold, here's your thawed, and here is your frozen. And notice it's optional. If you don't stick it in there, um, it will just erase it. So anyway, that is buckets in a nutshell. I hope this was helpful. hope it gives you an understanding kind of how Splunk uses buckets and how it searches across them. And I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk ninja. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to this channel. Additionally, we offer the opportunity to become a member of this channel, and that membership has the perks of being able to see videos as soon as they're created, which could be up to a month before they're released publicly. Additionally, if you want to supercharge your lame training, we offer training that it will never be open to the public and that covers administration training it covers how to hunt and do analytic work we have apps and other things that we've done that really streamline the process and we offer those to our membership your membership helps this channel grow and allows us to get the technology and the abilities to be able to give better demonstrations and make 
this technology more available to everyone. So please like, subscribe, and if you're interested, I would appreciate it if you joined and became a member of this uh, channel.